Welcome back, everyone. It's John, Wade Boggs fan. Hope everyone out there in the card community is doing well. It's Friday night. So I have gone and done something that I very rarely do. I went out and bought a Wade Boggs card that I already have. It's rare for me to have a duplicate in my collection. As you know, if you've been following my channel, my goal is to get as many different Wade Boggs cards as I can. And currently I'm just over 5,200 different Boggs cards. So I've occasionally, by accident, purchased a card that I already have. But in this case, I did so on purpose. And so when I turn the camera around, I'll show you what card it is, and I'll show you why I decided to buy a second copy. Uh, plus, I got two other vintage cards in the mail today, so I will show them off. But uh, before we go take a look at those two cards, um, for those that have been that follow Major League Baseball, know of the big trade that took place yesterday between the Mets and the Indians. Uh, with the Mets receiving Francisco Lindor, um, and uh, I think it was Carrasco, I think the the, the pitcher. So, big splash, uh, Mets new billionaire owner. Um, I think this is their, the first uh, big trade under his ownership now. Uh, so, I wonder what that will do to Lindor's uh, values of his cards. Now, I don't I don't deal around with with modern cards, um, you know. Personally, going out or on purpose going out and uh, getting specific cards. Uh, for the most part, I'll open packs and get cards and stuff like that. But uh, so I'm not really a player in the the, the modern um, game of, of uh, cards and stuff. But for those of you who do, I'd be interested in your thoughts as to what that with this trade may do to Lindor's values. He'll be moving to a larger market. Not that Cleveland is necessarily a small market, but New York is New York. And, you know, for some of these younger players, um, it all depends on how they handle the pressure of being in a big market, whether it be in New York, LA, um, to some extent Boston. Um, I don't know, uh, they could thrive or the, the pressure could uh, could get to them. There have been many uh, trades either with the Yankees or more often with the Mets, so it may just be more of a Mets thing, um, that uh, once a player you know goes to the Mets or New York, um, they they don't perform as, as, as well. So I don't know. And while I'm a Red Sox fan in the National League, I, I root for the Mets. So as a Mets fan, this is a big... Uh, seemingly a big trade. I, I I haven't followed Lindor that much, although uh, checking some stuff yesterday about the trade and so on uh, seems to be really good defensive shortstop with some power, some speed. And they call him, you know, I guess, a five-tool uh, player. Uh, I think he's only 27. So, but I guess they, unless they sign him sometime this year, they're only going to have him for this year, and then it'll be a free agent. So. All that stuff will, will, will play out. Uh, so maybe signing a contract or not signing a contract could influence um, what he puts up for numbers this year for the Mets. So we'll see. But again, I'd be interested in getting your thoughts on maybe what uh, the prices for Lindor uh, cards are going to do in the, in the short term or long term now. So just interesting. And of course, lastly, we lost yet another Hall of Famer, um, Tommy Lasorda, famous for his uh, role with the Dodgers. Um, I think he was 93. So we're a lot of these Hall of Famers now are starting to get into their 70s, 80s, and 90s, and, and they won't be around for, for too much longer. It's a shame. Um, that's you know, how things go, unfortunately. But, um, yes, we, we lost another great Hall of Famer, uh, just a, a, a character of the game, I guess. That's a, a good way to uh, describe uh, Tommy Lasorda. But 
Um, anyway, he'll, he'll be missed. Uh, hopefully we don't have too many more uh, in this year. We had way too many last year, but uh, we'll wait and see. So, all right, uh, so let's turn the camera around and check out the duplicate Wade Boggs card that I got and the couple of vintage pickups. All right, so here is the card that I currently have in my collection, and it is the 2000 Finest Moments Refractors Autograph. Okay, and if you say, John, you said it was an autograph. Well, yes, there is an autograph there. If you can see, maybe you can make out some of the W-A-D part of the B. There's two G's there. Um, very faded. Um, I've seen other ones that are somewhat faded. I think it's the um, ink here, the pen that uh, Wade used to sign this. I'm not sure if this is common across um, other players' cards with the autograph or, or just Wade's, but I've had this card in my collection for many years, and I haven't exposed it to the sun. I think that's just how I got it, or I. I don't know. I've had it for, for quite some time. And whenever I see one pop up on eBay, I'm like, oh, you know what? I, I want to get another one uh, to replace this one just because the autograph, you can barely see it. And either, you know, the I had other things on my watch list that were more important or the price that they were asking for. These, these don't normally go cheap, these uh, finest refractor autographs here. Uh, but I found one. I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to get a replacement. I got it for a what I thought was a decent value compared to ones that have sold in the past. And so this is the replacement. As you can see, a much bolder, cleaner autograph compared to the first copy that I have. So again, one of those rare cases where I buy a duplicate, um, but it was just because the quality of this one was just so. I have ones where I'm not too concerned if it's a you know a mint copy, especially if it's a lower serial number card. This isn't serial numbered, okay. Uh, well, it it has a hologram, but I don't think there is. It's hard to tell. Yeah, there is a serial number it's maybe hard to you may not be able to see it but there's six it's like 614 i wonder if this has the same i just noticed that nope it does have a different number but it's not i can't believe there are 20 you know 223,677 <laughs> of these so, so i'm not sure really what that hologram is for other than a, a authentic authenticity thing for it it's a little Weird in my opinion, but anyway, um, not serial numbered, but this this card just bugged me that uh, that was the only copy I had, and I wanted a cleaner autograph. So there's that. Now for my two vintage pickups, I have a '78 and I have a '1980. The '78 is the Reggie Jackson record breaker for most homers in one World Series. On the back here, it says uh, set series mark with five round trippers. I believe he, let's see here, his five homers were most in one classic. Um, let's see, homers in one game and four in a row. Babe Ruth uh, had twice hit three homers in World Series game in 1926 and 1928. So, you know, put Reggie Jackson in good company. I don't know if the... 77 World Series was <clears throat> when he got the nickname Mr. October or whether it was in 78. Um, but uh, there you go. Nice copy of a PSA 8. <clears throat> and then the 1980 card is the Pete Rose. Um, nicely centered copy there for an 8. And there's the back of it. So yeah, those were my Two vintage pickups, still making decent progress on the 78s. Uh, we'll see if I can complete that set or the, the run of Hall of Famers uh, this year or not. I'm not, it's not one of my particular goals, 
would be nice, but I also want to get a wide range of vintage, uh, depending on what shows up that I can get for a decent price. All right, uh, so that's all I have to show off for the cards. So let's get to the trivia question. The trivia question from last video, I believe only two got the answer right. Um, a lot of you, well, let's we'll go over the question here first. Who currently has the highest career strikeouts per nine innings rate with a minimum of 1,000 career innings pitched? And it is, I gave a little hint uh, the last video. I said, you know, assume that it is, it's, a, it's an active player. Um, and a lot of you replied with some relievers. And again, based on their innings pitched versus, you know, relievers, you know, tend to strike out uh, a lot of batters. Uh, but it wasn't a reliever. Um, two pitchers that I thought it may be, um, I was thinking DeGrom or um, Scherzer. But it was neither of them. The answer is you Darvish. 11.1 .1 strikeouts per nine innings pitched over his career. Um, I, I don't follow Darvish that much. Um, I, I believe he has some good stuff, and I, I guess he really does. Uh, maybe he, even though he strikes out a lot of batters, maybe gives up a lot of hits. Um, I don't think he has a, a career great ERA, but uh, I'm not sure. But anyway... The answer is you, Darvish. So the new question for this video, maybe it'll be a little bit easier. The question is, Josh Donaldson became the second Blue Jays player to win an MVP award in 2015. Who was the first? So who was the first Blue Jay player to win an MVP award? Of course, I'll have the answer for you in my next video. That's all I have for you guys tonight. Hope all of you have a good weekend. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.